And joining me now is Joel Griffith, Research Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Joel, great to see you. Thanks so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, Owen just uh, reported on President Biden's uh, Build Back Better agenda. He's still pushing that. Um, you know, there's still a lot of questions about how that's going to be paid for. How is it going to be paid for? And also, can we talk about this proposed billionaire's tax? Well, this $3.5 trillion spending package, number one, it's far more than $3.5 trillion. Uh, but it's not going to be paid for. This plan is just another component of a radical, irresponsible left-wing agenda that's being pushed forward through this administration and in Congress. And to pay for that, it's going to require higher taxes, but not just higher taxes. There's no way that we can just raise taxes enough to pay for it. There's not enough money out there. It's going to require borrowing and putting that debt on the future generation's shoulders. It's also going to require our central bank printing more money and buying that debt. And, you know, that actually leads to the possibility of higher prices, which we're all realizing right now is no fun to deal with. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit more about that inflation. We're seeing a lot of it. And I know recently, uh, Secretary Yellen said that this could last until 2022. Well, this shouldn't be a surprise to her or anybody else. When you have a scenario in which government has been suppressing supply by for a long time keeping businesses shuttered, criminalizing business operations, putting in restrictions on manufacturing, and now putting in restrictions on energy production, while at the same time borrowing, printing, spending trillions of dollars in artificially increasing demand, that is a perfect recipe for inflation. And as long as we continue to see bureaucrats continue to mess with our supply chain system, to mess with our production system, to disincentivize people from working, we're going to continue to deal with problems like this, including including the risk of higher prices, which is really diminishing the standard of living for millions of American families. Yeah, absolutely. Is. I mean, you see it at the pump, you see it at the grocery store. And speaking of groceries, uh, the holidays are right around the corner. We just heard a report now that Thanksgiving is going to cost us a whole lot more this year. Oh, it is going to cost a lot more, not just for the food. If you can find some of the items that you want on those shelves, you go to your grocery store. There's a lot of specialized items you can't find right now because of these disruptions. It's going to cost you a lot more to make that food, to bake that food, and it's going to cost you a lot more money this year to get home, whether you're driving or flying, because we have energy prices at multi-year highs, even historical highs in some instances in California, for instance, where they're paying $7 per gallon of gas. Yeah, and I hear it's not just the gas, Joel. I hear it's going to go up with natural heating uh, gas prices as well, which is going to affect everybody. Now, so right, natural gas prices have about doubled since last winter. That's, that's a serious problem. And on top of that, since day one, we've had the Biden administration ensuring that future supplies are going to be limited. We've seen the Biden administration cancel the Keystone XL pipeline, which would have ensured an abundant, consistent supply of fuel coming in from Canada across our country. And we've seen the administration making it almost impossible for natural gas developers to develop on federal property. And it's hard to think back. We need to think back to just 15 years ago when we were dependent on foreign oil and we had much higher prices. And for a time, we experience what joy it is to be independent and to have abundant fuel, fill up your car for $1.50. This administration is risking our future prosperity with these energy policies. So I want to talk about the supply and chain issues. You know, we're hearing that a large part of the reason why prices are going up uh, is because we have these cargo ships sitting off the coast of California. They can't come in. They can't get drivers to drive those products to places. And now we're hearing that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is saying, hey, come to Florida. We'll help, you know, help out with that. Will that help out? Do you think that that will help out in time, at least for the holidays? It, it could. And this supply chain issue, this is a big problem. And it's, the blame has been put on COVID. This is not COVID's fault. This is the fault of politicians that have made it very difficult for truckers, for instance, to work. We had many thousands of truckers retire early over the past year and a half because in California, it was difficult to get a hot shower, difficult to get a bite to eat, difficult to find a place to sleep because of COVID. And at the same time, they made it almost impossible for new drivers to get CCL licenses. So we have a trucker shortage. And you've had California, in effect, declare a war on diesel trucks. So you've got these truckers go to the port in Los Angeles with their new truck, load it up, go to Arizona four hours away, unload to a new truck, and then turn around and drive back to the port. It's creating a bottleneck. And it's not because demand necessarily has gone through the roof. You actually have year over year the total amount of cargo containers coming in about flat year over year in Los Angeles County. So California is largely to blame here. 
Florida might come to the rescue. There's surplus capacity across Florida, and the governor and the Port Authority are welcoming shippers to come to the state of Florida and alleviate this in time for Christmas, hopefully. Okay, that's some good news, and I wanted to end on some good news. Tell us some more. Is there anything, any positive news that can come out of all of this for us? Well, I think a positive is that people are waking up. People are realizing that government policies, it actually impacts us. We see that with rising home prices, rising food prices, problems getting people to work, problems keeping uh, goods on, on the shelves of the grocery stores. People are realizing government policy has consequences. And I think, I hope that this will translate into Congress coming to their senses and putting the brakes on more of this fiscally irresponsible spending. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Thanks for, for uh, checking in with us. We appreciate it. Thanks so Thank much, you. Joel.